welcome back to my channel. I'm DIY Danny, and this is a place where I help solve your home decor dilemmas with custom DIY solutions. Oh my god, who is excited? I am such a Harry Potter fan, so I was so pumped to do this episode. And I know you guys are all pumped. I've been talking about this for a couple weeks now and it's finally here. I love the world of Harry Potter and the imagination that it brings with it. So when my friend Katie asked me to make over her bedroom inspired by Harry Potter, I was like, hmm, let me think about this for a second. Okay. <laughs> so exciting. Do we have a lot of Potter fans out there? Let me know what your favorite character is in the comment section below. I personally am a fan of Luna and Sirius, but that's just me. But you guys let me know who do you love the most from the books. Maybe we have a toss up. I think the most challenging part about being such a big fan of any fandom um, genre out there is that you want to be able to express your love of that genre in your home, but you want to do it in kind of like a tasteful and respectful way that doesn't feel too kitschy or too young. So it's finding that balance. And I think I always try to do it in like a playful way, things that play homage to the theme, but doesn't really hit the nail on the head. So that is what the theme of this episode is all about. We are celebrating the world of Harry Potter and all the wonderful magical things that come with it, but we're gonna do it in a tasteful way that makes sense for an adult in her bedroom. Before we jump into this, I would like to send a huge thank you to the sponsor of this episode, Audible. Audible has done so much during COVID-19 to help parents and educators and caregivers. I am a huge audiobook fanatic and I'm really excited to share some of the titles I've been listening to lately and ones that are coming up. So I will jump into that soon. But in the meantime, let's jump into the magical world of Harry Potter. I've been working on my apparition skills. So uh, <clears throat> got my wand here. Okay, ready? Don't really need a wand to apparate, but that's fine. It makes me feel fancier. <clears throat> okay, think of the place you want to go. Take me to Katie's. Okay, hold on, I gotta concentrate really hard. I think I just look like I'm pooping. Whoa. Uh, okay, this is not where I wanted to go. Try that again. Whoa. Uh, again, not where I meant to go. <laughs> Damn it! I've been working on this so hard for you guys. Whoa. Uh, okay, one last thing. Boop. So let me introduce you to my friend Katie. Katie didn't want to be filmed or be on camera and I totally have to respect that. So I decided that I would give you a little backstory my own way. She is 27 years old and stands a total height of 4'11". This is relevant, I swear. Katie is a total nerd of many fantasy genres out there, but I think she might be one of the biggest Harry Potter fans I know. She could pretty well recite the books to you firsthand, has all the Harry Potter posters, collectibles, plushies, you name it, she probably owns it. And she's just an overall cool gal, you know? But let me introduce you to her bedroom. At first glance, you wouldn't know a 27 year old lives in this bedroom. It kind of just stayed in the past, you know? We got two toned walls, floral wallpaper border in between, classic 80s trend, wallpapered closet doors, ooh, a single bed, collectible items overflowing the space, and clothes storage for days. As a fellow nerd, I can say I was impressed and totally taken back by all the cool stuff she owned, but this room needed to reflect a 27-year-old Katie, not a six-year-old one. Look at those cute carousel horses hanging from the fan. Adorable. A perfect bedroom for a young child. A young child. <laughs> So let's talk about the fundamental problems here. First off, the wall colors gotta go. The wallpaper, gone. 
Single bed needs to be upgraded to at least a double. She's tiny, okay? A double will be fine. All the collectible stuff needed to be cut down to half, but some extra storage was a must. Now, Katie asked for some particular things in this room and they were the following. Katie asked to keep her under bed storage. She wanted a place for her middle ground clothes to go. You know the clothes that like you've worn so they're not technically clean, but they haven't been worn enough that they're not actually washed yet? Yeah, the middle ground clothes. This currently lived on a doll bed, that had to go. She asked to keep her dressers, but was willing to let me give them an uplift. She wanted a place to hold all of her jewelry, a full length mirror, and last she asked that I incorporate her two most favorite art pieces, this History of Magic one and this Walking Dead one. All I can say is that we were going to need all the magic in the world if we were gonna transform this space. Actually, all the DIY magic in this world. <laughs> when did I get evil? Oh, weird. So I was challenged with a way of keeping her love of this world alive while also DIYing a space that felt adult, that felt cozy, and inviting. Challenge accepted, Katie. Challenge accepted. Was I nervous? Not a chance because I had a plan. So the first project to our Harry Potter magical bedroom is refinishing all of the cabinets. First things first, I gotta pull these out. I'm gonna do these outside. We're gonna remove the hardware, sand them down, then we can start painting. So I was getting my dresser set up when I was hit with a great idea that was going to change everything. This is gonna be handy. Oh yes, my friends, I bought a paint gun and it was going to cut down my paint time in half. Ooh, it comes in a bag. Ooh, I feel like I'm doing an unboxing. Ooh. Kinda looks like a bubble machine, doesn't it? Doesn't it look like this thing is gonna like produce bubbles? Pretty sure I had one of these as a kid. This is so cool, let's go use our new toy. I should probably read this. Ah, this is a lot. Screw it. Does anyone read the instructions? Sometimes. <laughs> I mean, I read them. I read the instructions. Before I could begin using my paint gun, I had to prep the dressers for painting. To do this, I was using a 220 grit sandpaper to scratch up the gloss finish so that I could give my paint something to grab onto. I had to sand every surface, the sides, tops, and drawer fronts. I then wiped down the surface, got rid of any dust, and it was time to use my toy. For this project, I was using Bare Ultra Paint and Primer in semi-gloss in the color Bakery Box. Hey, I'm scared. This is a uh, first time spraying with the sprayer. Take this is on one me. and go. Whoa! Wow! It's not machine gun. That okay. paint costs money. I was ready to start painting. Yeah, why, Danny? That's it done. This paint sprayer was pretty friggin' cool, man. <laughs> it was so fun. How have we ever painted anything without one of these? If magic really does exist in this world, I'd put that on the list because that paint sprayer is magic. Why haven't I ever done this before? All the time wasted. Damn it. Now, I will say this, I was making a few mistakes with the paint sprayer that day. I'm a newbie, okay? First timer. I actually ended up calling the company that made the paint sprayer and they were able to provide me with a couple of tips. Essentially, I just needed to slow down. Listen, I could make an entire video about how to use a paint sprayer, so I'm not gonna put it all in this video, but I have created a blog post about it with all the tips and tricks that I learned from being a first time user and what I learned from the company so I've listed that in my description box but all in all best purchase ever first coat's done <laughs> that thing's super fun while I was waiting for the first coat on the dressers to dry I decided I would move on to the hardware I loved these pools they were so antique and actually really just fit into that world that I was trying to create so they can stay I decided I would just give them an uplift using a gold metallic spray that just made them so much more elegant so Hogwarts just love. After that, the dressers received one more coat of paint and at that point, it was getting late. Another DIY day tomorrow. Lots of new things going on. One that includes this guy. Does anybody remember this guy? Yeah. Oh, it's happening. <laughs> Can't wait to show you guys. See you all.
tomorrow. While we wait for me to sleep, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about the sponsor of this episode, Audible. This is my second time partnering with Audible and that is because I am such a huge fan and user of the platform. I have mentioned this before, but as a person who is on the go and constantly doing things, audiobooks have saved my life. I used to love reading, but my life, I'm sure just like yours, is constantly on the go. I am always in the car or I'm in the garage or I'm in the backyard. So I just lost time to sit down and actually read. And listen, if you're saying read before bed, I could get two sentences into that book and I will fall asleep. It would take me probably about two years to get through one book. <laughs> Four get it. Audiobooks make time pass so quickly and I just love being taken into another world. Very quickly, Audible is the leading provider of spoken word entertainment and audiobooks. They have thousands of audiobook titles, podcasts, guided wellness programs, theatrical performances, A-list comedy, and exclusive Audible originals you won't find anywhere else. The app is free and you can download anytime and listen anywhere with a subscription. I recently just finished Star Wars Ahsoka. Star Wars fans, it wasn't too bad. This book was a great look into what Ahsoka was up to after Clone Wars. But if she ain't your jam, the audiobook called Kenobi is so good. It takes place right after Obi-Wan Kenobi takes Luke to Tatooine and hides from the Empire. And then right now I'm currently listening to City of Girls by Elizabeth Gilbert. Ladies, great book, very cheeky, very Liz Gilbert if you're a fan of her. Next on the playlist is Sandman by Neil Gaiman. Yes, my friends, it's an audiobook. Neil Gaiman is probably one of my favorite authors. I am so excited to start this book. It was originally a comic book and if you haven't read it, you totally should, but now it's an audiobook and I am for it. Can't wait. What's my next DOI project? <laughs> Each month, Audible members will receive one free audiobook and access to monthly selections of Audible originals. I also just wanted to mention that Audible launched a special website where anyone, anywhere can stream hundreds of titles completely free no strings attached for as long as the quarantine lasts. This is so great for parents who are looking for screen-free experiences to look forward to each day and you don't need to be an Audible member to access. So get on the audio train with me. Visit audible.com slash Danny or SMS text Danny to 500 500 or check out stories.audible.com if you want to check out their free listen titles. Let's jump back into this Harry Potter makeover madness. <gasps> oh. Okay, so I have set up shop in the backyard. I have a little surprise for you for this one. Harry Potter, right? With Harry Potter comes platform nine and three quarters, which comes old luggage. This trunk has been with me for over three years and I never knew what to do with it. And you guys gave so many good ideas when I was doing my garage cleanup video, but then I think it's so unique and I wanted to use it for what it was meant for. And when Katie introduced this issue where she kind of had this middle ground clothing, I knew I have the solution. I want to use this as Katie's kind of like middle ground clothing to put on display and for some extra storage. How cool is that? But then the kicker is I was at HomeSense and they had these old trunks. Guys, look at this trunk. She is so beautiful. So I got this one and then a smaller size. I wanna build a base, two pieces that this will sit on that's gonna raise it up to make this a little bit more level. And then these guys are gonna sit underneath. Then the best part, these guys. Don't these kind of remind you of a golden snitch? Just a little, or flying keys. It'll sit right on the front of the stand to kind of like zhuzh this whole thing up. To build my trunk stand, first I had to measure my trunk, cut my boards. I was using one by 10 boards I already had in my wood stash pile. I was also cutting a few more one by 10 boards to create shelving that you will see incorporated later. Let's cut some feet. One would say we're a step ahead of ourselves. <laughs> I don't know, I'll try. And two by two lumber for the legs. Sanded them down and removed any rough edges and pre-existing stain I had on beforehand. And last, give them a coat of stain. I also sprayed the decorative ornamental front piece in the same metallic gold spray I used on the dresser handles. All right, DIY friends, it's been a long DIY day, but we got a lot done. Tomorrow, we're getting a little bit more crafty. It's gonna be a fun day. See you all tomorrow. 
So I was ready to start assembling my trunk when I realized I made a fundamental design problem when I was measuring out my stand. I knew that this wasn't as long as the length of the suitcase, but what I didn't account for was the fact that these two by twos are gonna take up space too. So that meant that this didn't technically fit underneath like I hoped. Don't. <laughs> so I think I might have a plan. I'll put these two pieces here, and then what I'm gonna do is create a piece that sits in the middle that this will hold up in the back as a middle post, and then these will have the two frames on the side. I didn't want these to be connected, but I might not have a choice. It's a little extra work than I was hoping for, but I think it might be okay. We're gonna make this work. So I changed up my plan to make it one piece and added a small triangle to the design that connected the two pieces in the middle. I painted this black and simply used my pocket hole jig and a small metal brace to hold it all together. Problem solved. Of course, being the perfectionist that I am, I wanted to clean up a few lines, so I added wood fill in a few spots, but that also meant I had to sand the piece, which means me painting it black ahead of time and staining the boards was a big old waste of time. Don't! I then got my legs secured, added a small brace in between each leg, and I had a trunk stand. Of course, I didn't have any of the stains I previously used left over, so I was using a new stain color, but the DIY gods were on my side because this color was actually perfect. So perfect, in fact, that I ended up restaining my shelves in this color too. It all worked out, and that's what matters. Okay, on to some more crafty parts of this Harry Potter makeover. I wanted to replace those carousel horses with something way cooler, and that was DIY flying keys. This is probably the only DIY I created that really hit the nail on the head, but like, I had to, how could I not? To make my DIY flying keys, I first had to source keys, of course. I had sourced these keys from Amazon and they were just perfect as the base to my design. To form my wings, I simply cut into an aluminum can using a utility knife and scissors to make into a rectangle. To keep it straight, I took an old wood board and small nails and nailed the can rectangle down. Next up, I drew two wings myself that I based off a bug wing pattern. If you like this, I'll make this pattern available on my blog if you want to download and print it yourself. I nailed down the pattern on top of the can and used a small push pin and my drawing to guide my pinholes all around the design. Once I felt I covered the entire design, I removed the paper design and cut the wing shape out using scissors. The last step was to use a small wire that I had to wrap the wings onto my keys, twisting the wire off on the back, and secured it with crazy glue just to give it that extra hold. Now all I had to do was repeat this step one more time and just like that I had two flying keys. Now I actually planned to spray paint these gold but I had one more DIY to finish before I could do that. Katie had these old lamps in her room, nothing special but she really liked them and I thought wouldn't it be cool to revamp these lamps and make them feel a little bit more Harry Potter inspired. So I got thinking about Hedwig and then his cage, are you following me? Let's get rid of the lampshade and make a cool cage as the new lampshade. How cool is that? I hope you guys think that's cool or I'm just like crazy. <laughs> so I ended up sourcing these bird cages from Ikea which were the perfect size. The first thing I needed to do was figure out the size of the hole I needed to cut on the bottom of the cage. I measured the lip around the top of the lamp to find the circumference of the circle and then divided that number by pi which is 3.14 to give me the diameter. This ended up meaning I needed a three inch hole saw to make this project work. Math. So I measured out the center of the cage, used a three inch hole saw made to cut metal, and simply drilled out a hole. But I'm just mentioning that you need to be safe, wear glasses, and use a buddy to hold down your cage if you can't clamp it properly. Thank you. Once I had two holes cut in both my cages, I used sandpaper and a Dremel tool with a sanded head to really smooth out the edge and make it safe. 
Now, I wanted the cage to sit snug on the lamp, so I decided to find a way to create a soft edge by hacking an old computer cord I didn't use anymore. I simply cut it open, removed the guts, and using my hot glue gun, I glued it all around the lip edge. Now, to finish both my cage and my flying keys off, I took them outside and sprayed them with my gold metallic spray paint. I mean, pretty amazing. Look at this. Wow. Let's do one more. While those pieces were drying, I also felt inspired in that moment and decided the triangle in my trunk stand was also going to be given a little golden flare. And then to add my piece de resistance to this stand, I finally added on my ornamental pieces to the legs that really provided this piece with that old Hogwarts feel I was going for. To finish off this long second day, the final touch to the dressers was to add back that little gold line detail that was originally on them. I was using a metallic gold paint pen to do this. Look at that crisp line! A lot happened today. I accomplished so much that day and I was very tired and very excited to finally get into Katie's space so that we could start to transform this magical place that we were working so hard to create. See you in the space. Bye-bye. Guys, we're in the room. I have a very special friend with me today. This is Marnie. Say hi, Marnie. Hello. Everyone, welcome Marnie to the DIY family. You're probably going to see a lot more of her because she's going to be helping me on lots of new projects behind the scenes because I'm only one person and a girl just needs some help. But Marnie, for you to be helping me today on the Harry Potter Spire room, you have to pass my Harry Potter test. Okay. <laughs> First question. Snape has a special cantation that he made when he was a teenager. Do you remember what it was? Not one single bit. You failed. <laughs> Continue. She's awesome, super handy, way cooler than me, and you're gonna see a lot more of her, and I'm happy about that. First things first, we got the whole room prepped from the floor to the walls. We were ready to attack that room. First up, the wallpaper. Oh, so sad, buddy. If there is something more satisfying than watching wallpaper be removed from the wall, I can't think of it right now because it felt so good and it was so satisfying. Yeah, it feels real good. <laughs> Did I make a new trend or what? It's called wallpaper couture. Try it sometime. <laughs> Once all the wallpaper was removed, I sprayed down the backing with wallpaper remover and used a scraper to lift it off the wall. All in all, it came off pretty well. Look at that, no more wallpaper. What? Yeah! It was finally time to paint. Okay, Marnie, question number two, here we go. When Harry was going to meet his end with Voldemort, he did what to the snitch and what was revealed? He kissed it? And what did the snitch reveal? What words? Oh. Fail! Yep. The answer is I open at the close. The plan was to paint a beautiful blue accent wall on the back. The same blue is going to be reflected on the doors and everything else was going to be a nice crisp white. We ran into some issues. One being that it's so hot and humid even with the AC blowing that the paint just isn't drying fast enough. So we're gonna have to literally give it the night, come back tomorrow, and then do some touch-ups and finalize pieces. That's the downside. The good side is that it looks dope, it's gonna be magical, and I can't wait. <laughs> so I will see you all tomorrow. So install day two was not off to the start I wanted. I was painting the last coat of white and doing some small touch-ups to the blue doors. But after all the touch-ups were done, it was finally time to start focusing on the real fun parts of the room. One of those things was getting the bed built. Wait. Mark, Ron had a pet rat. What did he name it? Scabbers. <sighs> finally. <Yeah. laughs> I made that one particularly easy because I was getting really sad for you. <laughs> the bed I sourced for this space was from Ikea called the Songsen bed with storage underneath in brown. Ikea was kind enough to gift this beautiful bed for Katie along with a few other elements you'll see integrated soon and I could not be happier. Next up was the rug and let me tell you why I sourced this rug in particular. Look at the markings on it. Doesn't that remind you of Hedwig? Isn't that fun? 
obsessed. It was so perfect for a space that was meant to play into the world of Harry Potter, but not hit it on the nose. If you walk into the room, the rug just looked like a normal rug. But if I tell you that it's a Harry Potter room, you're gonna make that connection right away, and that's exactly what I was going for. Brilliant. And once that bed was in place, wow. It was the perfect color of warm brown against the dark blue wall. Ugh, it was just perfect. It's all coming together. What did they call people who could talk to snakes in Harry Potter? Um, bar parcel tongues? Correct. I've been waiting for this moment for so long. Then the shelving went up, two on each side of the window. So much storage was finally off the ground. And then I added sheer curtains to add a little whimsy and softness to the space. Okay, let's talk about those bedside table lamps. <laughs> oh, it's so good. I found the perfect side lamps that totally felt like it played homage to the Quidditch rings. Look how perfect these were. And they dimmed. It made this space feel so luxe, yet so Harry Potter inspired, and the gold played so beautifully off the bed tone and the dark blue. Marnie, what house did Cho Chang play for in Quidditch? Ravenclaw? That's correct. Yay! Hey, I'm up! Yeah. Next, I added custom Harry Potter inspired artwork that was going to hang above the bed. I found this beautiful artist on Etsy from the Ukraine. The shop was called Digital Art Dairy. I hope I pronounced that right. I will link the shop in my description box. I purchased a picture of the Hogwarts train and the Hogwarts castle that the artist had created in a custom gray tone color for me. And of course, I framed both art pieces Katie specifically asked for, which both found a place in the room. So Katie has a lot of jewelry, like a lot. I think Katie owns enough jewelry in weight that it might weigh more than her. <laughs> and she had asked for a standing mirror and some way to organize this jewelry. So I figured let's find something that does both. Guys, this is the coolest thing ever. Check this out. Well, this doesn't seem that amazing. We open it. Oh, I'm sorry, did a light just come on? <gasps> Look how cool that is. It's got little ring holders here, jewelry racks here, pouches, little areas for all your bracelets. Oh, it holds stuff. You can put your studs here. How amazing is that, guys? <gasps> and it hangs on the wall. Okay, Harry and Charlotte, it's time to say goodbye. No, quit horsing around. I can't handle Oh, I love it. As a last little element to this room that day, I wanted to play homage to the Hogwarts paintings on the wall. So we're gonna layer these frames like this all around in threes, and they're gonna go here. So here's the final wall. How amazing is that? I love it so much. Okay, so it's kind of like really late. So I'm gonna go home, go to bed, come back one more time and then set all the rest of it together and it's gonna be brilliant. All right, I will see you all tomorrow. On the last day, I came in to add in all those final details and special touches to the room that really brought that entire space and Harry Potter theme together. Are you guys finally ready to see my DIY adult Harry Potter inspired bedroom for my friend Katie? Using the power of DIY magic, I turned a room that was fit for someone under the age of six <laughs>
into a beautiful, functional, adult, Harry Potter themed room that was so perfect for Katie. It was whimsical and magical and it felt warm and cozy. It was just a room that you didn't want to leave. I know I couldn't show you guys the reveal to Katie, but I can tell you she was absolutely blown away by this room. I mean, how could you not be? This was just the coolest DIY inspired makeover ever. I was so happy that that trunk finally found a place and a home to a deserving person and I couldn't imagine it to go to a better person than Katie. Thank you to Rachel from Green Eye Craft Co for creating the decals and Digital Art Dairy for creating the custom art pieces. Thank you to Ikea for donating some of the items that you saw in the space. and the world of Harry Potter for inspiring generations of young adults and adults to create magic in their worlds. This was just the coolest DIY makeover I think I've ever had the chance to do. This is why I love it. It's so amazing to see rooms like this come together and it was magical and amazing in all the right ways and just couldn't be happier. You guys should let me know what was your favorite part of this room. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this wonderful Harry Potter inspired makeover. Thank you again to the wonderful sponsor of this episode, Audible. Make sure you use my link and or the SMS code I've shared with you in my description box. And guys, if you're Harry Potter fans, let me know what you thought of this makeover. Did you find it inspiring? What was your favorite part of this bedroom? And what do you love about the wizardry world of Harry Potter? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching and supporting. Don't forget to subscribe because we got more amazing DIY creations coming your way and you don't want to miss out. I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.